Okay, we play? All right. Let me uh, begin with a reflection. The Greeks were the first to develop a metaphysics. That's a strange word, metaphysics. Let me talk about it for a few minutes. Let us say there is a range of human experience from the most common experiences, sight, hearing, <clears throat> Let's call that the realm of the senses. Then there's common sense. Everyday understanding. Oh, then unusual experiences, aesthetic experiences. Uh, above that, there's another kind of experience, more profound. We can call that the more profound experiences. And above that, let us make another, another category and call it that open to the mystical or the philosophical. Now, metaphysics is nothing other than a way of understanding this realm. That's all it is. It's creating a language and creating images to render intelligible the profound experiences of man. Sometimes they're called peak experiences. And so over the years, there's been a thousand years of development of Platonic thought. That development of Platonic thought had as its goal to make intelligible man's most profound experiences. That's the goal of metaphysics, nothing else. Now, the difficulty in getting into metaphysics in the modern world is that it's somewhat difficult to go around the corner and get a mystical experience. Difficult. Even if you try drugs, it's not certain. <laughs> so therefore, there's a whole way of talking and understanding about things that are most profound. And for most of us, we can't get into it. We can study it, we can memorize it, we can talk about it. But its primary purpose is to render intelligible this. So that can be used as a springboard to something yet higher. And that's the real goal. Well, if there's something higher than that, and it's difficult to get to this, then that is going to be even more remote and rare. And that's the higher part of metaphysics. But there's a way around it. There's a way around it. And that's what I would like to point to. This language to understand these experiences. Right? It's a specialized language and it's called metaphysics. This special language is really and really can be used to understand your own experiences and to render intelligible your dream world. Now, that's rather curious, you see. This is a different way of looking at the dream world. How are we going to show that? That's where we're going. It's going to take four weeks and maybe a retreat. I just came back from a retreat up in Esalen. We did this for a week. Now, what do I mean by saying that to render intelligible 
the dream world, we will use the language of metaphysics. Well, it means first that we'll have to see what is meant by the dream world. We want to talk about its structure. We want to see what figures, images it uses. We want to take a look at the structure of dreams and the figure and images and the meaning of dreams. We want to look at that and ask ourselves what created it. If we can study the structure and the figures and the images of the dream and reach a level of meaning, personal, personal meaning, then dreams are intelligible. Now, if dreams are only personally intelligible, if they only have a personal message, then the, the creator of dreams is just some extension of ourselves and it's only limited to ourselves. But if there is a more profound aspect to what created it, let's even build to it. If we can see that what created it is itself, transcendent and imminent and in the highest sense wise or reveals something called wisdom then we can use that as a bridge and bring in the stuff called metaphysics and you know what you'll see you'll see that you'll be able to use a metaphysics to understand what creates dreams from your own dreams. And what will that do? That will allow you to find a language in metaphysics that you can then easily use and verify for yourself since it's your own dream and see that you are in fact or have within you, or share, or participate in, something that is indeed intelligible, profound, and can anticipate the mystical. That's where we're going. Okay? That's where we're going. So I thought I'd introduce it, give you the whole thing all at once. Now, a couple of words to play. This talk is about philosophical midwifery and dreams. Now, what a strange and unusual word that is, philosophical midwife. I mean, people are going to come here thinking that we're talking about local midwives who are philosophical, but that's not what we mean. Socrates called himself a philosophical midwife because his mother was a great midwife. And he said, just as my mother assists those in labor and travail and helps them bring to birth? He says, so do I. Help men who are pregnant with ideas. And so I help them come to birth with their ideas. And they go through what appears to be a parallel process, psychologically. Well, he goes on to say that not only is he a philosophical midwife,